Hello everyone and welcome to Ellen with a Y Goes Live. Thank you so much for joining me. I am a little under the weather. I have a cold so I don't particularly feel very good but I'm really excited that I had this amazing show to do tonight and I have an incredible guest with me. Candace Hokett is going to be joining me later in the show. So I gave her a lot of vitamin C and a lot of echinacea. She is not going to get sick from being in this apartment. I'm just a tad under the weather, so send me some good juju and some good vibes. All right, diving in to this episode. This is episode, if you can believe it, episode 38 of Ellen with a Y Goes Live, which means the 40th episode spectacular will be coming up soon. I'm so excited. That'll be, I think, two weeks. So we'll have a really fun special holiday themed episode because it is the holiday season and I love this time of year, my family knows. So diving right in, hot topics. They are um, five, okay, so these are like personal hot topics. So first of all, happy birthday to Leanne Tadaro, my little, Dear darling friend, I wanna wish you a happy birthday. It's her actual birthday today. So happy birthday to Leanne. And an early happy birthday to Carolyn who was here earlier. Her birthday is November 24th and I'm September 23rd, so that's how we remember each other. And then also I just wanna remind everyone, <laughs> is I'm someone who kind of leaves all of my like shopping and all of my holiday things to the last minute, that today marks five Tuesdays till Christmas. So, Putting it in context like that, just a reminder, it's a reminder for myself as well. So moving into what to watch, um, I was homesick today, because I'm clearly not well, and so one of my favorite shows to just put on in the background while I'm working, because I was working from home, is uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. So that is my what to watch for this week. I love... I love Jerry Seinfeld. I love all the comedians he has on. I think that he could stand for more women on his show. Maybe this will be a, like a call out to him to do that. But I love the show. I always send pictures of the cars to my dad. So I love comedians in cars getting coffee. I think it's really interesting. It's really short, so it's easy. It's a quick little easy to digest. You're not even committing to a full half hour show. And if you love comedy, you love comedians. Um, and if you kind of like cars, that's okay too. <laughs> But it's a really good show, so you should watch it. Um, and it's been around for a while. It started as a web series. Hi, hello, look at that. It started as a web series, although I am not Jerry Seinfeld. Um, and then it went to Netflix, so anything can happen. Moving into the food for thought this week. Last week, as you guys know, Disney Plus launched. And this weekend, I spent a little time watching some Disney Plus. Uh, shows. Thank you to my brother-in-law Wayne for the hookup. And I watched, what did I watch? I watched, oh, Even Stevens. So good. I love Even Stevens. I had such a crush on Shia LaBeouf as Lewis. Everyone's like, really? I'm like, yeah, he was funny. He was like a funny kid. No. <laughs> Kansas is like, no, not so much. Um, and I watched Even Stevens and I also watched um, like high school, high school musical, the musical, the series, which is so funny. I'll, when I finish watching the whole series, I'll tell you whether or not it's worthwhile to watch, but it is really funny. It's kind of like a glee meets the office in the way that it's like that first person, like that cam kind of way. Anyway, well, this is not what to watch for Disney Plus. My food for thought is I was talking about like, you know, these streaming wars that are going on right now and just kind of creating these personas of these streaming um, accounts. So like, as it would be related to relationships. Because Disney Plus like came out as like the new, like the new person in a relationship, you're excited, sometimes it glitches, but you're explaining away those little red flags in the beginning because you like this person and you're excited and they're new and you're finding all these things you have in common. Like, oh my God, you like Even Stevens? I like Even Stevens. So that's kind of like Disney Plus is like the honeymoon phase of a new relationship. And then you've got Netflix, who is kind of like that jealous partner who decided to drop all of the best shows that they have at the same time that Disney Plus is launching because they're like, 
we, they want you to like remember them or they don't want you to move on from them. You know, everyone has that ex that like wants to post a lot on social media and make sure that you know how well they're doing without you. So they drop the crown and they drop atypical and they drop all their best shows at the same time at Disney plus at the same time you're trying to move on with Disney plus Netflix is just trying to pull you back in. And then you've got this for real. And then you've got Amazon who like is great. Like it's, a, you know, everything's good, but and you like spending time with them and you have a good time and you have stuff in common, but like there's just no spark. Like there's no staying power with Amazon. Like there's nothing about anything happening with Amazon Prime Video that you're like, oh, like this is, the, this is who I need to be with. And they're definitely not beating out Netflix or Disney Plus. And then, um, <laughs> so that's kind of like the way that I was explaining all the different streaming networks because we were talking about it at work and it just kind of felt like the different types of personalities and relationships. So if you relate to this, let me know. You can comment along. Amazon Prime is in the friend zone. Exactly. Like, like you like Amazon Prime. Like there's nothing wrong with Prime, right? There's nothing wrong with Prime Video. There's just like, there's just like not that thing, not that spark. So that is my food for thought about the current streaming wars taking place uh, on all of our Roku devices or whatever you guys use, your connected TVs. And then I am going to move into the guest portion of my show. I'm gonna bring on Candace Hokett to join me to the show. Woohoo! Hi! Here, let's get comfortable. Hey, Hi! Who's Here on? we go. Oh, everyone. Hey, hey everybody. <laughs> so, Candace, I want to shout out your Instagram really quick. CX Styles. You guys can all go follow her. So, Candace, we met at work, right? But I'd like you to explain to everyone, like, how do we know each other? <laughs> okay, I met Ellen at work. I started at Refinery29 in May of 2018. And, um immediately at orientation they have new employees share out just like a few fun facts about where they're from what they do and i wrote that i was from jersey obviously <laughs> rep for jersey if anybody's hey. from jersey hey um and ellen uh worked maybe like two rows behind me and it's an open floor so she said to me i hear you're from jersey <laughs> you're from jersey i'm like who is this girl back here <laughs> But I leaned in. You she's leaned so cool. in. And somebody was like, Yeah, you need to do coffee with Ellen. She's like somebody that's good to know. And they were not wrong. And she's Aww. amazing. So you're so yeah. sweet. So I wanted to talk a little bit about so I'm gonna read off some of the things that Candace is involved in. You are such an entrepreneur. You're someone who has that entrepreneurial spirit, and I think that a lot of times uh, people who maybe are looking to start, you know, be a self-starter or like look to do their own business, you know, are looking for motivation, but also looking for that staying power in being entrepreneurial. And I know we talked a little bit about that earlier. Sure. So I'm just going to read off some of the things that Candace is involved in. So Candace, so she works in research for Refinery29. That's how we met. You also do tailoring, alterations, and suiting. You're connecting creatives through your your account and your business, Connected Seams, and you're working on Forbes The Culture, which you're the NYC lead for. Can you just explain what all those different things mean? Sure. In a nutshell, I think the common denominator amongst them all are that they mean that I am a people connector and I really do strive and thrive to bring people together and help not only um, each other find new ways to network across, but to do it authentically and to build connections that really matter. And I think that that's hard in New York City when, you know, you're just am amongst and around so many mm -hmm. people, but to be honest, you can still feel very lonely. And I think that that's something that I really want to tackle and mitigate amongst a lot of people within our age group and just within our um, respective industries. We have a lot to give to each other. So that's what I love to do. Um, it I love that. It reflects in everything that I do. So so can you explain a little bit that what Connected Seams is? Sure. So Connected Seams is pretty much a real life manifestation of that um, superpower that I do think I bring to the table. Um, it started with a few friends in 2018. And it really just came from a lack of resources and accountability, as well as um, encouragement around a lot of the people that I knew that were side hustling and starting side projects 
outside of their nine to fives specifically within fashion entertainment yeah. but to be honest things branched out a lot wider than that after our audience has grown and what now we do to bring creatives together in an authentic and realistic way is we've been launching our new series called the kickback and it's really just a mix of a house party and a networking party and i feel like i don't always love going to a bar mm. i definitely don't necessarily go to a bar or a mixer rather to make a new connection and go yeah. there alone to be excited about making a new friend i might go to do business or may go to just figure out what's going on on the scene but i could have really missed out on that experience if that's the only thing i'm there for if i was there to build a stronger connection imagine the the magic that i could create so that's what we do with the kickback if you're interested in going click the link in my bio once you follow me after the show <laughs> okay and then you I can sign it. up yeah and then can you explain a little bit about what is specifically the forbes the culture is which i love you know yeah. play on words so Forbes the culture is something that I feel like was a call to me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I necessarily raised my hand for. So in 2018, that was a really good year for me, clearly. Good for yeah, you, 2018. I, I, had a job. I started a new collective. <laughs> yeah. And then I really, um, I got... A lot going mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I, I was leaving um, a role in entertainment, going to... Um, R29 and I was selected as a global international fellow for the Forbes under 30 conference. It's Impressive. like, like kind of, Look at you. Really. I mean, just to level set, it's an introduction to the community if in fact you want to go through the nomination process of um becoming an under 30 list maker that is not me yet mm -hmm. and if that does happen this is the way to start that so okay. long story short met a bunch of other um, multicultural creatives and entrepreneurs with startups and dreams changing the world abroad and then came back to new york city and met a bunch of people locally at some of the local forbes events um in boston and somewhere some other places um within the u.s so the leaders of this organization just came from a social group of wow. people of color feeling like these major conferences don't usually have representation. Enough, for, yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that that's something that I can always get behind. Mm -hmm. I used to work for BET. I do a lot of cultural-based research studies. Um, it's really the crux of why I do what I do. So Forbes the Culture is just a play on words, and it's an actual formal entity underneath Forbes organization. And it's specifically for multicultural um, creatives of color to really step up and have a stronger network within the Forbes under 30 community. And you don't necessarily have to be under 30 to join or be <laughs> Be a part but we're really just trying to build our presence in New York as there are many other people that would like to get together more often yeah. than not outside of just the summits or anything that happens on a national scale how can you bring it back home so. and I think something that's really important and I talk a lot about on the show is like you needing to no matter who you are like needing to look into representation and making sure that what you're participating in is representative of like what our world looks at looks like so I actually was having a conversation uh, with someone about a panel that was going to take place and when you when we looked at like who the speakers were on the panel there was like not there was no black women and there's like that's that's a huge they're problem missing out. and like they are missing out and to 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 know that you have a responsibility to say something and I'm like saying everyone you have a responsibility to say something yes. and to actively make change. Like that's how you can show up for someone else and that's how you can show up for people. And it may seem like, oh, just like checking out who's on the speaker's panel. I'm like, oh, oh, that's what it is. Right. No, it doesn't have to stay that way. It doesn't. You can speak up and say something and make a request that it be changed and add people in. You don't have to like cut other people out. Just add more people in. So FYI, if you haven't noticed, that is the indirect definition of allyship and i just want to say that my friend ellen over here is ally to the t okay thanks Good. girl i appreciate that well that's like what, that's what like what i talk a lot about on the show it's just like you know you gotta show up you have to show up for people and the people you love and care about and represent them yeah throughout your whole life even if they're not right next to you that's you have to do that so that's how i believe basically she's got my back yeah of course <laughs> Something else I want to talk a little bit about is, as you can tell, can't, I feel like you're very present, you're very self-aware, you're very intentional, and you're also very like in tune with yourself and like the world and kind of like how you 
how you move forward. And I feel like in entrepreneurialism, someone that is entrepreneurial, you can sometimes like lose steam. And I was wondering how you stay so driven and so motivated and so connected to your truth and how you stay on your path. So I will say that even though Ellen is really giving me a lot of credit, <laughs> I will say I'm just like everybody else. I think it is very hard to be committed and motivated to do anything, whether it's based upon an entrepreneurial lifestyle and new track, or if it's really just saying you don't want to eat as many M&Ms from the bag in one sitting as you did yesterday. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the same level of self-control. And what I've learned so much about control this year in particular is that you have to learn that it's not yours. Um, it's about the fact that it's always going to be around you and it's just a matter of how much you're willing to give, how much you're willing to take, and how much you're willing to allow to surprise you. Mm. And um, I think I've lived my life very intuitively to manifest a lot of things that have been going on for me in terms of new changes. In a nutshell, if you all know me, new changes being um, switching outside of being full-time at Refinery to tr transitioning to a more consultative-based role. And it's been really awesome and just fortunate to say that my employer can still see me as valuable enough mm -hmm. to do something in a way that's more flexible for my time. So that was a blessing and I feel like I literally manifested that. Yeah, I did not sure. want a new job. And I literally <laughs> said I want to do the same like, exact I thing. Do this. But I like don't want to different get a new terms. Job ever. Yeah. And I got exactly what I wanted. And that's I only so say that to say like the main thing that keeps me going um is the ability to stay inspired and I find my inspiration through as many small things every day whether it's music or a message or helping someone out or just listening more intently to someone else's story to find something that could encourage or teach me mm -hmm. um, but also I'm like a nature girl and I feel as though for years sometimes I was putting aside some things that could come naturally to me just because they didn't seem normal. Mm. And I'm not saying like taking a hike isn't normal, but to be honest, um, for instance, I went on Sunday and I asked yeah. about six friends and they no all said no. No one wanted to go. And that's fine. Mm. I mean, look, it was meant it's for me for to everyone. be alone. Yep. And that was for my own retreat and my own, you know, reflective purposes. And Showing I'm yourself happy about like that. that self love and self care and nurturing yourself basically I think people don't nurture themselves and I'm not saying that I do or don't I'm not like necessarily the best advocate or you know practitioner but I do think that there is this level of like self-care and self-love and nurturing yourself that needs to take place so we're actually gonna play a little game so every show every episode we play a little game so this is kind of related to not feeling well <laughs> It's kind of where my head is at. If I wake up sick tomorrow, we're gonna fight. No, you're not. Like I know that. we're literally so close together. <laughs> I'm like, even over I'm trying not to even like sniffle. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. So, okay, oh, so the game branding. we're gonna play is Would You Rather. We're bringing back an old classic. We haven't played this in a while. Okay, would I rather? So, would you rather have a runny nose or a sore throat? Runny nose. Runny nose? Why? Yeah, sore throat is just the worst. I'm also quite soft-spoken, even though my voice is um, commanding, I guess. Yeah. It's also quite soft-spoken. So as soon as I get sick, my voice is shot, and I'm like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be like a little and, you know, try to push through the day than yeah. to strain. So than to strain. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, right? Okay, yeah. I think I I would rather have a runny nose as well. Because sore throat is just like a constant state of agony. Whereas like, <laughs> that's how I feel. Like I just like lay the there. Pain, like, the like, agony. Trying. Literally. <laughs> it is the worst. That's how it feels. Like okay, you're just like, there's yeah. nothing that can make it better. So like, no, even the medications and stuff that you take, you're just like, your throat is still like hurting. Okay, we're on the same side. Okay, same page. Okay, okay the next one is, would you rather be vomiting or would you rather have diarrhea as the sickness? <laughs> it's so gross. Okay, I would rather throw up because really? I do not throw up often, but as soon as you are done, it's like the wave of heat that takes <laughs> over your body and you get so numb. You literally fall to the floor. You cannot move when you're about to throw up. There's nothing else your body can do yeah. but just 
up chunk. And like, <laughs> to be honest, I would rather just get it out one good time. Just hopefully. I'm yeah. assuming yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, and you then you just get it. <laughs> I hope. And then you feel like you are weak. But yeah. once you're done, not only is it out of your system and your body did conquer the worst case scenario, but then you also lose like two to three inches around your waist. Oh my baby. God. Yes, I definitely no. like yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. But like, I'm not promoting no. throwing no. up for like any no. type of weight loss. Oh purposes. my God. I am totally the opposite. Okay. I would, <laughs> no, because I hate throwing up so much. Like the lead up to it, you know, like when you start mm-hmm. to get hot, that wave Yes. Heat, and then your mouth starts to walk. <laughs> water and it's like this like does. yeah oh no that's the sign that's the sign that you're gonna throw up is when your mouth starts like inextric- <laughs> inextricably watering it's like filling with like water and okay. you're just like and then you get up and it's just like that like n- like that heat. nauseous feeling and then I'm kind of like as I've learned in my 30 years on this planet I'm a bit of a violent vomiter so like I will literally get a broken blood vessel on my face oh, from how violently I vomit this is disgusting sorry everyone straining too hard I'm straining. Just let it go. no because I hate it so much I'm like, I'm like crying like I'm like tearing up you know it's not good for me so while I hate hate stomach aches you were rather diarrhea honestly also like i carry tums on me 24 7 so like i would just be chopping down on those tums and hopefully that, that would chucky mouth i, I can't i'm like i'm such a tums advocate that should be like my first you know what i should have said the episode sponsored by tums they would have liked <laughs> this that. episode is actually sponsored tums, by tums, tums. honey <laughs> lemon juice vitamin c echinacea and nyquil dayquil and Dayquil. <laughs> what if I took Nyquil? I don't remember this You'd tomorrow. Be out like a light tonight. <laughs> okay, so that is our game, which means we are going to come into the final segment of the show, the Noah Centineo news segment. Okay. Do you know who Noah Centineo is? I do not. Oh my god. <laughs> I have spoken about him on this show for thirty-eight episodes. It's my little Matt Damon. No, it's my Matt little. It's like the Matt Damon segment with Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, where fun. we don't have time for Matt Damon. Right. We always have time for Noah. Okay. Although, update on Noah Centineo. I don't know if anyone's gonna believe me, but I'm kind of, I think, over it, which is a huge deal and very shocking. But I watched like it. Literally, I've been like talking Doing about this him for a very, for long, a very time. long time. I watched an interview with him last week when I was when I was editing last week's episode and I watched two interviews and in both interviews I just like couldn't get over how much of a tool he sounded like Mm. I couldn't get over it so Mm. I don't know I got like a real cringe feeling and it's very upsetting and I'm very sad but I still like you know I look back on like you know in a relationship you're like I look back on the good times with fondness and like it's over and he can do his thing and I can do my thing and you know maybe everything if he everything is a relationship maybe if you I know everything's coming back to that <laughs> what would my everything in say? life is Ellen's boyfriend I mean and then um, we're done we're done literally everything I'm in a week <laughs> over you right now <laughs> so that is the Noah Centineo news update which means that is the end of our show Candace thank you so much for joining me I appreciate you coming on the show thank you thank you everyone for watching I appreciate you watching this week. <laughs> I hope this show brought you a little bit of joy and a little bit of laughter because we could all use a lot of that. And if it did, go out there and spread it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. To subscribe to my channel, click here. And to watch more videos, click here. Be sure to like, comment, and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video.